Hey, what's up? Mr. Bill here today. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make an automatic hocket machine. So basically what hocket is, is where you take one melody and you cut it between many different sounds. So for instance, like let's say I had all of these uh, patches here and they're all playing basses. Um, you know, I might highlight all of these. Uh, so, so all of these are playing the exact same MIDI. So if I just turn them all off by highlighting everything and pressing zero, I can then just go in and sort of, you know, turn on little bits of MIDI for different sounds. And then what will happen is each, uh, each clip will, you know, play the corresponding synth patch that it, that's on that channel. And the result is that it kind of just sounds like pretty like crazy and, and, Lots of different sounds happening for each different note. Sounds like this, basically. Something like that, which is awesome, in my opinion. It's something that I use a lot in my own music. <clears throat> um, the only thing is it's kind of a pain to, to go through the whole thing and like edit everything to be like, all right, I just want this note here. I just want this note here. I just want, you know, this note here and this one here and, and so on and so forth like this. By the way, I think that's a slow way to do it. Um, the fastest way I've found to do it is the way that I just did it at the start of the video where you just press zero on all the clips to mute them. So zero is the shortcut for mute. And you just highlight each one you want and just go through and just turn them on this way. I've found that to be the fastest way. Um, and that works fine. That's something that I've been doing for a long time and I'm okay with it. Um, but Hullabaloo recently told me about this trick that you can do with uh, compressors uh, to automatically switch between this. And it was I thought it was a really impressive trick. So I'm going to show you guys that trick um, and girls. It's 2019. All right. So uh, let's you know, go back to normal mode. So I'm going to turn all of these on. Uh, if I play this group now, what's going to happen is it's going to play all the patches at once like this which is not what we want. We want one to play at a time. So what we can do is we can put them in a group. So I've already put them in a group here called mid basses. Uh, and on that group, <coughs> I'm gonna put a compressor. And then what I'm gonna do on this compressor is click this little triangle here and that'll open up the side chain area. And from this, we can select a place for the compressor to take input from. And usually why you would wanna do this is to take input from something and then you would want the compressor to duck based on that input. And the classic uh, reason you would do that is uh, you might take like your bass channel or something like that, and then you might take the audio input from the kick, and then every time your kick hits, it compresses the bass, i.e. turns the bass down. Um, and that can be really useful because um, it can like avoid clashing in your mix, like get stuff out of the way and whatnot, but also it's just like a nice stylistic effect that's really popular in pretty much all electronic music these days. Um, but the other thing you can do is you can take the input. So for instance, like if we take the input from 43 Serum and then you press this little headphone icon here. Now what that's going to do is that's going to preview that channel. So now if we play this, it's just it's just going to play that uh, the signal that's coming in. So rather than compress the signal at all or anything like that, it's just going to preview it and listen to it. So now what we get if we play this whole group is this. Notice we're just listening to that channel. If we switch this over to 44 Serum, Notice we're just listening to that now. If we turn this compressor off, we'll be listening to everything again. Like that, which sucks. We don't want that. So let's just uh, take the audio from 43 Serum on this one. And then we're going to group this compressor and we're going to create multiple chains. So let's create a second chain. And on this chain, we're going to take the input from 44 Serum. So now we have two channels, both of which are taking the audio input from a different Serum. So if we solo each one of these chains, you can see there's a different serum coming in on both of these chains on this group. So you can kind of see where this is going, right, with the, with the automatic hocketing. Um, if we create an extra chain, <coughs> take the input from 45 serum, create another one, take the input from 46 serum, um, then we want to go up to 49 basically. So let's get this one to come from 47, get this one to come from 48. <laughs> at this one to come from 49. All right, and that's all of our serums. So now what you would expect is that you could go in here and just move the chains, right? Um, and then when you move the chain selector around, it will work uh, as in it would like cut between all of these separate sounds, right? Um, you would think that that would be the case, but it doesn't work. And the reason why is because uh, I guess for some reason Ableton has decided when you switch chains over, like if you have a release tail or something like that from another patch that's happening in, in one of these chains, it wants that to play out rather than just cut it off and choke it. 
Um, so what you actually have to do is you have to create a macro. So what you do is you um, take all of these mutes for the chains and you map them to a macro. So let's map these all to macro one. And then you, oh, God damn it, here we go. <laughs> um, and then what you want to do is you want to uh, range the macro. So you click this map button and what this does is it allows you to sort of create ranges on this control. So what we want to do is take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, we have eight chains and we want to break that up into a range of 127. So usually I just try to break this up pretty evenly. So if we just go 127 divided by eight, um, each range has to be about 15. Um, so if we make the minimum for the first one 0 to 15, and then the next one 15 to 30, the next one 30 to 45, <coughs> uh, the next one 45 to 60, I guess. Um, I'm really bad at math, so if I screw this up, um, don't hate me. Uh, 75 to 90, and then I guess the, the last one can just be 90 to 127. Um, that wasn't really even at all, was it? <laughs> Uh, but whatever. Uh, so anyway, now what happens is when the when the control is say between the range of zero and fifteen, you'll notice that it just stays on this first. Uh, it's it's leaving that first chain unmuted and the rest are muted. And if you go up past fifteen, so to say anything fifteen and above, you can see now the second one has become. Uh, unmuted and the rest have been muted including the first one that was on and if we keep going up to say like past 30 now notice that it's switched over to that third one and so on and so forth so now if we mess with this knob um what's going to happen is it's going to flick through these different serum presets <laughs> So that's fun. Um, one way that you could use this now is you could just come onto this channel, <laughs> come on the channel, and then just uh, move the, just automate it basically, or automate that macro, and that's going to cut between different, uh, it's going to mute and unmute these different chains, all of which have these compressors on them that are taking auditions from channels within that group, which sounds like this. <laughs> which is pretty damn cool in itself. Um, one thing I don't really like is I don't really like whenever I change my sub channel to have to change all the other channels. So what I usually do is I just don't have MIDI on any of these channels. Um, and then I just take the input from my sub channel and just turn all these channels to uh, input monitoring. And now whenever I change anything on this channel over here, like say, you know, just make these some random notes, invert these, maybe reverse these, just to show you that now this will be reflected on all of those MIDI channels. Pretty cool. Um, so that's that's a one cool thing that you can do. So now that we've got all of this set up, <clears throat> uh, what else could we do with this? One thing that I like to do is um, rather than automate it, I like to kind of let the computer make some decisions for me and that way it kind of gets a bit random and when stuff's random, I find it to be generally more exciting. So whenever um, you know something might happen that's unexpected and that might make me go, oh, that's interesting and that gives me an idea. So I like to randomize stuff a lot. So sometimes the way that I'll do that is I'll have this sub channel. So currently what I have here is um, just a sub that I made. And then I, on this second channel here, I have a velocity plugin. And this velocity plugin, it's uh, the way you set this up <clears throat> is you load it first and then you turn the random all the way up and then you set the out high to 64 and you put it on fixed mode. And now you can see it's filled this whole window up with gray um, above and below this yellow line, which basically means that it's going to be completely random velocity that it's sending out. And then you can put this expression control plugin, which is from the, um, it's from a max pack called, uh, I think it's just from the core core library. It's somewhere in here. If you just type in expression control into your packs, um, you'll find it. It's somewhere in here. And if you load that up, what that's going to do is it's going to take that completely random velocity that's coming out of this plugin. And if you hit map and then you map this to the speaker on, now what's going to happen is every single time a MIDI note gets sent in, i.e. every time your sub is triggered, it's going to send a completely random signal 
to this speaker on icon and switch the sound to something random. So you can kind of get like true hocket going on now. So that sounds something like this. If we put the sub on too. So that's pretty cool. It, it means like every time a, a note is triggered, it just like switches it to a different sound. So you don't have to kind of sit there and, and look at all the MIDI and, and kind of like move the automation every time you want it to switch on each new triggered MIDI note. Um, so that's what this sounds like now. Sounds a bit weird because it's not like uh, leveled and mixed properly. Uh, also, I want to give a shout out to Tipper because he gave me a bunch of patches that I'm using in this tutorial. Um, and they're really cool patches, in my opinion. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's basically the trick. It's just a nice, uh, interesting uh, way of just cutting between a bunch of different sounds and, and doing Hocket in a different way. And if you've been doing Hocket in your tracks anyway, then you know, maybe this is something that you'd want to try out. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think of this trick in the comments. Um, subscribe if you think it's cool. Like the video if you think it's cool. Go join my Discord. I'll put a link to the original Hullabaloo tutorial in the description. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed everything and uh, have a good day.